Hello everybody, that's here, very happy to see all of you on the other side of the screen. Today I would like to make a new video for my complete water cooling guide, which I started, believe it or not, 13 years ago. It's crazy. So I was shooting it on a camcorder camera with a 720p resolution, which was the top of the line and back then, and now probably looks very blurry on your perfect OLED 4K monitor. But information is still the same. I'm looking through those videos from time to time before sending to my clients and uh, it's still valid. So I'm not sure I ever will be going to reshoot them because it's basically the same stuff. Just can be a little bit more sharper than before, but they're all saying the same stuff. So today we'll talk about filters. This is subject comes up on a regular basis. It's not very common items that are used by my clients but it's used um, often enough or let's say often enough i have questions about those so i think it's a good idea to talk about it also i figure out my own way to use filters and i kind of consider it's mandatory item for myself and i would like to explain why i come up to this conclusion so many of you will be probably asking oh come on i'm using brand new parts it's everything should be perfect or let's say I even reusing parts, but I use all these expensive chemicals and I clean it perfectly and there should be no problem, right? Well, from my personal experience, it doesn't matter how well you clean your system, there's always something that left over and it's a good idea to catch it because it's, believe me, it's much easier to clean a filter than disassemble your loop and clean and open your water blocks. CPU probably a bit easier, but like GPU stuff, oof, you don't want to do that more than you have to. So using filter is a good kind of safety net for my, me personally. I usually attach it to my brand new build system for first two weeks. It's not typically part of my design and not part of the final how system looks, but I just use it, see if I ca can catch any debris or any leftovers that somehow made into the system then remove it clean put aside with the rest of my tools and just use computer for quite a while without any problems and it always works for me and i can tell you that uh, during the COVID and our move to a new office and also i had some health issues so my last build was extremely neglected for almost four years and uh, because i did everything right i didn't have any problems so like look, I saved the liquid from my previous build that I used before the skeleton build and you can see that it's a little bit green from the, all the copper oxide dissolved into the liquid but I didn't get clogged, it didn't really lose its clarity or anything like this so the system was properly done and it survived through the abuse also in normal circumstances I usually try to change liquid maybe if not one year but at least within two years but you see it works for me so there's a few types of debris that can still sneak into a system also you might thinking that you clean it all the worst type of debris that you can find in your system actually coming from very popular rubber tubing or zim tubing that a lot of people are using now if it's not flushed it contain nasty rubber sand or little particles of sand that will shut your system to zero i discovered through the in in a hard way i build a system for a client have like a gallon per minute flow rate and literally in two days i shut down below one liter per minute which is a four times of the flow and it's like what the hell is going on and I discovered that I see some black stuff into CPU block because it was acrylic version. So I open up and it was almost completely shot by the rubber particles. So I have to clean it and actually after that it was no problem because it's, it gets washed, filtered by the CPU block and that was end of the problem. So I figured out that, oh, come on, if you use a filter you can actually avoid problem like this. Another thing which is less severe, but um, sometimes shaving left into your hard tubing, PTG, metal or acrylic, those also get usually stuck in your, in your water blocks. They are not as evil as uh, rubber, it will not shut down you completely, but you will find them next time you will clean your block, guaranteed. So using filter for the short period of time, it's additional 
way to ensure is your system clean it will be working well for the next few years or until you want to do maintenance or upgrade for some new exciting stuff so that's why now let's look what kind of filters you can use and how to choose a better filter because I also come with a few motions that make me decide what kind of filter I would like to use typically the most common type of the filter is some sort of the tube which allows you, or not necessarily a tube, it could be like a saucer shape, look this is a coolant one so basically you can attach two fittings and insert it as a part of your loop and you have some sort of mesh that sits in the middle. As a good ones is a better metal, sometimes some sort of nylon used, but those get clogged really easily somehow, much worse than the metal, and uh, I would recommend to use those ones. So metal a little bit better, easier to clean, and um, will last you longer. So it doesn't matter what kind of shape, this filter has a little mesh inside, filter your stuff. So the maximum they cost like 20 bucks and you probably can find even cheaper ones on aliexpress also they might be sometimes leaking because assembly really crap and um, as usual business as usual with inexpensive chinese products disadvantage of this type of the filter is that they have very narrow water parts that completely abstracted but by the filter itself and if you get a little bit of debris, then you get clogged pretty fast, your flow rate goes down, and sometimes it wouldn't even last through two weeks if you have some problems. So this one I usually try to avoid. I have my experience with the coolants, and I was really shocked to discover that I use it actually longer than two weeks, but you can see that it's it's kind of full of stuff and if my flow rate was not that great and I usually try to achieve the maximum flow rate if I can because it gives you a little bit of better cooling performance so basically what you need to look at you need a filter which is allows you to get a little bit bigger surface area with your mesh which you have inside of the filter a really good product that recently was released by Beats Power it's compact, inexpensive, around 20 bucks. And how they do it, they make like a tube where your liquid goes inside with a mesh around the tube. So they literally at least triple surface area from which liquid coming through and filtered it out. So this is much less restrictive. It will take longer time to clog it out. So if you would like to use filter maybe a little bit longer that will be work better because it will not obstruct your flow rate for the long time and as i said it's not expensive item and i think it's kind of looks interesting so that's one i use in my skeleton for past two weeks and i just clean it up i had a little bit stuff but not much but still better it i found it there than inside of my cpu block there's a couple other options. We have a, a new product also from Alpha Cool that was just released a few months ago. It's a little bit ugly, but especially if you're not going to use it all the time, this is even bigger filter inside. So you can see this is a massive cylinder that has a lot of surface area. This body will probably will take a year to clog properly. So if you, it's it's a little bit more expensive than Beats Power, but it will be even less restrictive one. So this is an Alpha Cool, is another one that you can find. And I would like to show you one artisan type of product. This is an aqua computer filter, which is super fancy. It's about like $50 or so. And you can see you have a massive big window with a big mesh inside. You can see clearly what's clogged or not. You can actually cut, if you're into the modding, you can cut your case and attach it to the side panel so it's like always visible in order to clean it you can close valves and then open the window and clean it so it can be a permanent fixture but you don't need to drain the system to clean it which is pretty cool so this kind of fancy item quite popular in the store believe it or not and people never send me pictures so guys you bought a lot of those show me how it looks in the real life I personally never use it, but um, I can appreciate the engineering and how it looks. So, in order to 
put the filter into your system. How I personally do it? Well, when you discover quick disconnects, and no way back. So essentially, I have everything in my system usually at least in key components on quick disconnects. So essentially all I do, I just put to the quick disconnect on the filter. I disconnect one of the tubes. In my particular case, I use the one that goes into CPU and I just inject filter into the system and it's very easy to remove it after. So this is a one way to do it. You can permanently attach it but then you have to drain your computer in order to clean the filter so which is not recommended. So definitely quick disconnect is easier way to do things or you have a filter with design that doesn't need you to drain anything and can be permanent type of the solution. So that's basically how you use filters. That's why you use filters. I would say that it makes sense to use them. Also a lot of people skip on those particular ones. So think about it. There's a not very expensive option can save you a lot of headache down to the road. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this tutorial helpful and answer your questions if you think about filters and I will see you in the future with a new tutorials and reviews.